So today is going to be all about a really legendary whiskey. So like uh, we describe it as the king of Ireland, I um, came back to Dubai after a year. I started in Sipinik Bhatia's uh, Indigo. Dubai was it was at its really really peak, start of the peak with some fantastic F&B concerts. Space in Scotland just reminded me of uh, monsoon movie. Is it cats or dogs for you? Goats. <laughs> all right. uh, it could be Jim Murray or David Brown or Ian Boxton. They all have this liquid uh, kept at a really high report. The note written by the legendary Michael Jackson, where he talks about love songs to John. But uh, going to Isla or going to Isle of Sky, these are such romantic locations. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, so last year uh, we had released. A lagoon in nine years old. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Discover series with the Whiskey Advisor. I'm Uday Balaji. So today is going to be all about a really legendary whiskey. We're going to be discovering all things Lagavulin with Diageo brand ambassador Asmani Subramanian. Hey Asmani, how are you doing? Welcome to the series. Uh, fantastic, Uday. Uh, it's great to uh, speak to you. Uh, all the good things about lag and uh, bit of uh, history, bit of uh, uh, funny things about Lagavulin. <laughs> Looking forward to it. But before we get into it, guys, please like, subscribe and hit the little bell so you'll know every time we have a new video in the series. Uh, so Asmani, do you have some lag in your glass? Yeah, I do, yeah. Wonderful. Cheers, Slanja. Cheers, Slanja. So guys, Asmani grew up very close to where I live, just two hours away in uh, the absolutely stunning uh, Nilgiris. I wish I grew up there myself, you know. Uh, but you know, from there, you seem to have traveled all over the world, uh, Greece, the Middle East, uh, Scotland, all over. And I believe you're a sommelier as well. Could you tell us a little more about that? Uh, it's similar to Scotland, right? Hills meet plains for good scotch, and so did we uh, due to scotch. Uh, growing up in Wooty gave me a lot uh, in terms of the understanding for your fresh produce, good mm -hmm. quality tea, coffee, uh, and the love for spices. Uh, when I was in my 15, 16, uh, 16, I used to visit few hotels in Wooty to deliver fresh produce for them. Uh, that is the time uh, I came up with the passion for the chefs to choose the very fine produce. Possibly we as uh, normal people would not uh, look into those fine details. Uh, that is the time I realized, no, I got to get into hospitality. Uh, then joined in my hotel school, uh, finished my hotel school and moved up to Greece for my uh, trainings. And came back to Dubai after a year. I started in Sip Minute Bhatia's uh, Indigo. Uh, I was lucky enough uh, to explore Dubai. Dubai was it was at its really really peak, start of the peak with some fantastic F&B concerts. Uh, the hotel I used to work had about 22 different F&B outlets. Oh, wow. So lots and lots of uh, alcohol, lots and lots of beverages, and lots of lots of nationalities. And then I choose to do my wine studies later, and then visit up to Scotland. And my second job in Middle East was in Durga at the Ritz Carlton. Uh, I was lucky enough to work at the cigar launch uh, where we had about uh, 80 different biscuits from all over the world. And I worked with a live cigar roller, she uh, was from Cuba. Uh, at the same time, I was lucky enough to get uh, a big uh, sponsored trip to Scotland. I was in SpaceX Scotland. SpaceX Scotland just reminded me of uh, Monsoon Wooty, June, July, how bad it is, uh, the amazing planes in your sixth mile to eighth mile. Hope you would have been there, uh, hitting up to your Glen Morgan and so forth. So that's the time I got my love for whiskey hitting up its peak. That's absolutely fabulous. That's quite a journey. It's funny that you ended, started from Ooty and ended up in a place like Ooty. <laughs> yes. But yeah, Scotch has a way of uh, pulling you in, doesn't it? But Aswani, you watched uh, the series before and you know what's next. Are you ready for the rapid fire? Yeah, I am, yeah. All right. What is your first whiskey? 
John Yoo Wook of Red Label. Mm-hmm. What is your favorite bar in the world? Asado in Dubai. Uh, what's your favorite food? Uh, Chetina. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite sport? Hockey. I used to play hockey when I used to be in my high school. Oh, lovely. Is it cats or dogs for you? Goats. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is it books or music? Books and music. Both. Yeah. Yeah, both. All right. Yes. Beaches or mountains? I grew up in mountains, but most of my job was next to the uh, hotels, uh, next to uh-huh. beach. So it's both. All right. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Batman or Superman? Superman. All right. All the DRGO brand ambassadors seem to like Superman, yeah? <laughs> uh, but, you know, talking about Lagavulin, um, it's really come to be known as, you know, the connoisseur's choice. And some would say it harkens back to an old school uh, style of whiskey. But the history dates back over 200 years, right? So could you just tell us a little bit about the history of Lagavulin? It's indeed, isn't it? Wow. Mm-hmm. The peach and the sweetness just takes anybody across. So, like uh, we describe it as the king of Isla, mm-hmm. it's been one of the uh, liquid that's been loved by the biscuit drinkers all over the world. Um, and it comes from a very, very small place in south of Isla. And if you look into the history of Isla, uh, if you look into the Lagavulin Bay, uh, probably there were quite a few elect distilleries uh, in your late 1700s. Uh, but the first time uh, John Johnston set up a legal distillery uh, in Lagavulin Bay in 1816. And in 2016, we celebrated 200 years. And it's been always uh, always the whiskey of pure whiskey connoisseurs. Uh, Alfred Bernard, uh, he is the first uh, whiskey writer. So in yep. late 1880s, uh, he was at the distillery uh, in Lagavulin. They, he sampled an eight-year-old and he did write this. He held this whiskey of a really, really high repute and he said it's one of the exceptional whiskeys. Um, in 2016, when we celebrated uh, 200 years, right, we did release a Lagavulin 8 in memory of Alfred Bernard. Wonderful. But you know, you're talking about uh, connoisseurs appreciating the whiskey and, uh, you know, people, eminent people like Alfred Bernard. One of the notes that always stuck with me uh, was the note written by the legendary Michael Jackson, where he talks about Lap Song Su Jong as the note. Uh, what an absolutely iconic note. And could you just tell us a little more about the Lagavulin profile? and uh, the kudos that it has received over the years. Oh, that's a beautiful word to say by Michael Jackson. And Lapsang Su Chong, uh, it just takes it's one of the finest cheese in the world. So Lagavulin is similar. Uh, when you're a, uh, a single malt, uh, if you're trying, you got to look into three different characters. You got to look into the distillery character, how the distillery wants it, uh, new mix for to taste. When it comes to Lagavulin, it's got to be always PTO and smokier, and uh, the aging for Lagavulin is 16 years. It's one of the longest in Isla or for any other single malts. The 16 year in a cask is a really, really long time. It takes so much of characteristics from the cask. It brings in that uh, nice hints of sweetness that you would feel in your mouth, and then the hints of marine character. Uh, I would say it's got to be from the breeze that comes from your mm-hmm. Uh, Lagavulin Bay. Similar, not just uh, Michael Jackson, uh, it could be Jim Murray or David Brown or Ian Boxton. They all have this liquid uh, kept at a really high repute. And I uh, hope you would have watched uh, Nick Offerman and his videos and his love for Lagavulin. I haven't watched his videos, but uh, I've definitely heard about the 11 year old and I definitely, oh, I'm on the lookout for that. Who oh, you should watch his videos. Uh, Nick Offerman sits with a glass of uh, Lagavulin for 45 minutes, like a statue, drenched in paint. And he sits next to the fire for about 45 minutes, just sipping Lagavulin. Uh-huh. And he sips Lagavulin for an hour, just turning at a camera, 
just sitting still, enjoying the flavors, enjoying the smoke. It's just a wonderful video to watch. Uh, you should definitely watch the videos. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll definitely check it out. That does seem like an interesting uh, style of video at least. But you know, you mentioned uh, Lagvul in Bay. So a few years back, I had visited Isla and of course I visited Lagvul. Uh, so, you know, the view of the distillery from the bay, from the water side is absolutely stunning. And uh, Lagvul in such a famous whiskey talked about around the world, you'd expect a huge, almost like, you know, um, industrial complex but really the visitor center is so homely and such a wonderful experience i think it's one of those distilleries that's a must visit and could you just tell us a little more about the distillery experience as much it's indeed bright it's one of the most heartbreaking romantic destinations in scotland itself scotland itself is a beautiful country but uh, going to isla or going to isle of sky these are such romantic locations. Mm -hmm. uh, I think sitting down or walking in the pier in your Lagavulin uh, Bay next to the distillery, right? You watch this beautiful sights of the Donava Castle that shows you the history of uh, Isla. Um, have you done bird watching on Isla? The bird watching on Isla is one of the most, most, most uh, popular attraction. Okay, the next time so, for sure. Oh, next time you got to go watch. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, somewhere between April to September, ideal time to travel to that part of the world because it's pretty warm, it's not a uh, bit uh, fantastic time to be there. So uh, the visitor center, right, that was the world mill, world malt mill distillery, which was taken into the distillery itself. That's oh, okay. a beautiful attraction, which is to make really, really a, a PTO whiskey within your Lagavulin distillery. And uh, I believe that you would have taken aback by the two pure shaped, beautiful stills that's been sitting there, that's been making this fantastic liquid. Did you get a chance to meet Ian MacArthur? Unfortunately not, no. Mm -hmm. The legend, uh, this August 4th, he just finished 50 years with Lagavulin. Such a beautiful thing. He's a warm, uh, he's a true Isla guy. Uh, he has so much of passion and love for the liquid. Uh, he would uh, take you across the distillery uh, to the warehouse uh, with a lag of inside aging. Uh, he would uh, guide you through the tastings. Spending some time with Ian MacArthur, it's once in a lifetime journey. I don't think so. We would come across somebody like Ian MacArthur uh, in our lifetime anytime soon. So that's what I would say. Uh, he's just a fascinating legend for me to go see. Uh, going with him on a peat cutting trip uh, to the Castle Hill Bog. It's just a fascinating experience, right? And you see the water, uh, how peaty the water is, how amazing the water gets into the distillery. It's such a beautiful, beautiful thing to be there to enjoy the liquids. Mm -hmm. So next time I'm definitely doing uh, the warehouse tasting with Ian MacArthur. I just missed out on it. Uh, but bird watching and warehouse tasting, it's going to be an interesting combination. Please. You can do it. And please make sure that uh, either you're visiting Lago, uh, like Lagavulin and Distillery uh, in two instances. Either it's in May for your Festival of Modern Music. Uh, at the time, you definitely get a couple of uh, limited edition Lagavulin that's getting released. Or somewhere in September, uh, where you have your Isla Lagavulin Jazz Festival. Uh, we, we do release a couple of few limited edition bottles. Uh, these are some fascinating uh, time to be in Isla. Unfortunately, this year, uh, we could not have both the festivals. So, you know, the limited editions are quite uh, hard to come across as money. But that said, the 16 itself, is it, it really has to be in every bar, you know. It's such a special whiskey. And yeah, exactly. Every bar should have it. But... Uh, there's a wider large role in portfolio, and you mentioned a couple of expressions as well. Could you just quickly run us through the different expressions uh, of large role? Classic Lad 60, it's widely available. And our limited edition uh, in 2016, the Lag 8, it has become one of the most sorted of whiskies in the globe now. So that has also become the part of the uh, family. And uh, we do have uh, Lagavulin 11, uh, Nick Offerman edition. This is a tribute to the guy who brought lots of fun things into this piece. 
so we, he's the guy who broke that uh, whiskey being a stereotype, bringing in many more animals. It's an amazing liquid. You got to try it. I got one in Bangalore. Uh, next time we are catching up, we got to try it. Oh, and we do have uh, lag old and twelve year old castrate. And uh, every September you got your Isla Jazz Festival. So Lagoland can come with a beautiful limited edition. The same with your I Love Festival of Music and Malls in May. So we do release few whiskeys, which is really highly sorted out whiskeys. These are really collectible, collectible editions, and they just come and fly off. And normally, we do not get more than two, three thousand bottles. So it's really, really a small uh, quantity. And most of the people who go to I Love this time wants to pick up a bottle. And uh, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, mm -hmm. so last year, uh, we had released a Lagoon nine years old uh, cast trick. So uh, the whiskey is named after your House of Lannister. It's a beautiful match. Mm -hmm. So that uh, there's so many to try, guys. And uh, you know, when you go down to the distillery, you try some of the distillery editions and the warehouse tasting. They can't talk enough about that. Uh, but you know, just uh, coming back to reality for a moment. <laughs> so a few weeks back, I'd mentioned this uh, to Ajay also when we did the Glen Kinchy session. And uh, so what happened was they're at my uncle's place and my dad asked me to pour him uh, whiskey. I poured him a Lagavulin and then he wanted a little bit of water in it. So he took a jug and poured it. It turned out to be a coconut water. So he's like, oh God, what is this? And he's about to pour it. And uh, so I was like, you know, dad, just hold on. Uh, let's just try and see what it is. You know, this doesn't happen often. And it was fabulous. It, the coconut water, I don't know what it was. Maybe just the match with the sweet and the smoke in the lag just elevated it. Uh, so just to close out, and you'd mentioned fresh produce at the Neil Gris, and I know you work in cocktails. Why don't you just leave us with a few cocktail suggestions or flavor suggestions that we can try at home? I have just added a splash of water. Mm -hmm. it's, it just opens up. It's so beautiful. It's much more approachable. You know, there's no single way to have a uh, scotch whiskey. Mm -hmm. Let it be your blended or let it be your single malt. You can have it striker. You can have it with over ice. You can have it with water. Or you can have a good cocktail. In India, most of us loves our whiskey with uh, lots, of, lots of water and soda. The moment you step to Japan, right, that becomes a great highball tradition. Uh, men and women after work, they would step up to their neighborhood bar, have a nice highball, where the bartender would take a glass, fill in lots of ice, add a large whiskey, a good quantity of your water and soda. And then it's a beautiful tradition. Mm -hmm. So uh, the whiskey comes from a different place, right? Uh, it's got its own provenance. It's got its own DNA. It's got its own characteristics. So if you're not a whiskey lover, I would always recommend you to adapt it to the flavors that you like the most. Bring in a small splash of that layer of the flavor, just enhance it a bit and you enjoy the way you wanted it. There's a fantastic cocktail called penicillin. Mm -hmm. Penicillin is a twist on a whiskey sour. It's Johnny Walker Gold Label. A ginger honey syrup. You take your honey, you put a bit of ginger, and you just uh, cook it for a bit, and a bit of lime juice. You shake it up, serve it over rocks, and a float of your Isla Malt. Uh, I would do Kalila, mm -hmm. or I would do Lagula, or your Talisco. The smokiness and the fruitiness from the whiskey and the citrusiness, right? That makes it a complete, complete whiskey drink. So it's up to you. The way you want to have it. And whiskey would be there. You do it with a good cocktail. Still, the characteristics of whiskey would uh, linger in the entire glass. It just makes it more enjoyable. Uh, imagine Ulaik would be uh, spending uh, time with his friends and family. At the end, whiskey is all about conversation, right? Possibly, you see, I do not have much more selections with me. Uh, if a friend visits me now, possibly if he does not like one of those flavors, what I would do is I would ask him what style of flavor he wants. I would try to incorporate those flavors. And obviously, it's always smart to bring in the flavors from your kitchen. 
I, I think it's a very, very, very nice way to put it. One is, you know, you're sharing uh, whiskeys to, you know, to build memories, you know, at some level and uh, make it more accessible by asking people what flavors they like rather than pushing what they should be drinking. That's, that's a really, really cool parting thought, Asmani. Uh, but it's been so much fun. It's always great chatting with you. Uh, I end up learning a fair bit as well. And I'm going to make myself a penicillin this evening. So, <laughs> yes, so guys, yes. uh, if you want to get in touch with Asmani, I'm going to put his details down in the description below. And I will also put the Lagavul and handle on Instagram as well as uh, the link to malts.com where you can learn about all the Diageo single malts. Uh, but uh, any last words, Asmani, for the viewers? Uh, it's been fantastic to speak with you, uh, Uday. Uh, the way you're approaching whiskey, right? It's got much more of your pronouns that comes in. So when it comes to whiskey, right? Enjoy the day you wanted it. It's a whiskey with lots and lots of characteristics. And obviously, it's completely nature, what nature is giving you, uh, what the wolf bile can do, uh, the sort of flavor it brings, uh, the sort of time the whiskey lies in the work valley, it matures slowly, right? Something being slow is also good. Just like a good lax experience. I couldn't agree more. Slanja. Slanja. So guys, that was absolutely fantastic. Another great session in the Discover series. And as always, I'm going to ask you to like, subscribe, and hit the little bell so you know every time we have uh, a new video in the series. So. Many thanks to Asmani again, and what a fabulous whiskey log wilderness. Hope you have one uh, to drink today. Slant. <laughs>